Number one says a function G can be represented with a graph that contains these two ordered pairs. Write an equation of the form G of X equals A times B to the X to define the function. So we um, can see when this is, we can see on this graph that it's decreasing, right? So we're going to have a growth factor less than one. And a couple of things like we need to figure out this initial value. That's going to be our A value. And then we need to figure out the rate at which it's decreasing. So if we look at these two ordered pairs that it's giving us, we've got negative two, one. And then we go all the way down or up to one, right? So we've got negative one, we've got zero, and then we've got one we know is one over 64. And so the way I kind of look at this is I know that this one is kind of three exponents away from here because three growth factors, right? Here's one, here's two, here's three times. And so that tells me that I kind of want to look at what number to the third power is 64 because that's what I'm going to have to multiply by here. And 64 is four to the third power. So I can rewrite 1 over 64 as 1 over 4 cubed or even 1 over 4 to the third power. So if I do 1 times a fourth, I'm going to get um, 1 fourth. And if I do it times a fourth a second time, so 1 fourth times 1 fourth, I'm going to get 1 over 16. And if I multiply by a fourth again, 16 times four gives me that 64. So that common growth factor there is one fourth. And then you wanna be looking at the initial value here. So at zero, where am I at? One sixteenth. So when we write out this function, f of x equals the initial value times the growth fa factor to the x power, our initial value is 1 16th times then our growth rate that we just figured out is 1 4th. So 1 16th times 1 4th to the x power would be this equation. Number two, using the fact that 2 to the 10th equals 1024. Tyler estimates that two to the 20th power is gonna be about a million. And that log base two of a million then would be about 20. Do we agree with Tyler? So for sure on this part, two to the 20th equals a million. So log base two of a million equals 20 since that would kick back that, that exponent, right? So how did he estimate this? So two to the 10th squared, right? Would be two to the 20th because we would just multiply those. So 2 to the 10th squared would be about, or would be the same as 2 to the 20th. So Tyler's just looking at that 2 to the 10th here is about 1,024 or about 1,000 if we're estimating, right? And 1,000 squared, three decimal, or three zeros here, 1,000 squared would give us six zeros then. So we'd have about a million. That's where he estimated that 2 to the 10th um, 2 to the 20th would be 2 to the 10th squared. So about 1,000 squared, which gives us about a million. So definitely agree with Tyler. Number three, for each logarithmic equation, write an equivalent equation in exponential form. So we want to be looking at these bases, right? So it's the natural log for each of these. So the base is E. So we have E to the P equals 618 e to the second equals q since the log kicks back the exponent, right? So then this one is e to the t equals 100. And this one would be e to the third equals this input of e to the third. All right, number four, the function of f is given by this. It models the balance of a bank account in thousands of dollars t years after it was opened. So what is the opening balance? And so we can see that 10 out front here is the opening balance. So it's 10 
but in thousands of dollars. So $10,000 is what the account started at. So about when does the account reach $1 million? And so when we go ahead to plug this in, we need to think about how many a million is in thousands of dollars. So then just delete off three of the zeros. So a million is a thousand thousands. So we want to know when this will equal out to a thousand equals 10 times E to the 0 0.07 T. So then I'm just going to solve this. So I'm going to divide by 10 here. And when you divide by 10, so 1,000 divided by 10 is 100 equals e to the 0 0.07t. And then if I'm solving an exponential function with an e on the base, okay, then that would be a natural log. So the natural log of 100 would kick back this exponent of 0.07t. So then I would just um, need to evaluate that and then I could divide by 0 0.07 to get to t by itself. So t is just going to equal the natural log of 100 divided by 0 0.07. And when you type that into your calculator, you get about 65.8 years. So about 65 or 66 years is when that's going to happen. Number five, the function f is given by this. Write an equation of an exponential function, g, whose graph meets the graph for a positive value of x. So you get to write down anything, any equation you want here. And so remember, um, you know, this one starts at 20, and then it's going to be going up at this growth rate of e. So you want to write an equation that will, um, will cross this one. So you have a couple of options here. Well, a lot of options, okay? But when you're doing this, um, your first option is that your initial value is above or below this, okay? So if you pick a number that's below 20, so let's say I pick my initial value to be 15. So if my graph is starting below the original one, then it needs to be rising or growing. Its growth rate needs to be higher than E so that it will catch up to it. And remember, E is 2.71-ish, okay? So if, I, if my value, if my initial value starts below the graph, then my growth factor needs to be higher. So I could put any number here higher than E. So I could put 3, 4, 5, 12, whatever I wanted, 2.8. As long as if this is lower, then this needs to be higher. So that's one option, okay? You could also start your initial value above this, right? So a different one for X. So if you picked a number above 20, so your graph is starting over or higher than the original. So let me just put in like 25. Then my growth factor needs to be less so that it's not growing as steep so that this one can catch up to it. So then this number has to be less than E. So you could pick anything you want there, but I'm going to put 2 since that's less than 2.7. So those are kind of the two ideas, and then you can pick your own numbers. For part B, it says write an exponential function H whose graph does not meet the graph for a positive value of X. So when we're doing this one, again, I'm going to do these two options. So if it starts above this, or sorry, if it starts below this graph, now we don't want it to cross, right? So if it starts, let me just draw this again down here. Okay, so here's 20 times e to the x. So now if we start below, we also want to make sure our growth factor isn't higher, because if our growth factor is higher, it's going to cross. So we want it to stay below. So now we want the growth factor to be lower than 2.7 so that it doesn't cross. And then again, you could start above. So if you started above the graph, okay, so if I started at something like 25, now I need to make sure that this growth rate is still higher or equal to, these could be equal to as well, um, because if they're growing at the same rate, they're never going to cross either. Um, so something equal to E or higher. So again, I could do 3 to the X, so higher and higher so that they never cross. 
Number six, the area of a wall covered by mold is growing exponentially. Without treatment, the area doubles each month. Complete the table. Okay, so after one, um, so this is the area. After one month, it doubles. So one times two, that means one month has happened. Now, 16, how many times did it double? So um, 16 is two to the fourth power. So that means it's doubled four times. So then the months is four months. Now, 20, so what is 20 as a power of two? So that means that we need to do log base two of 20 because two is not, or 20 is not an exact power of two. And um, so you could write it like this and you can also evaluate that in your calculator to be approximately 4.3. 32 is two to the fifth. So this would have an output of five. And 64 is 2 to the 6th. 100 is not a nice power of 2, so we would need to do a logarithm to figure out what power of 2 would give us um, 100. So log base 2 of 100, which is about 6.6. .6. So then for any value of A, we would need to know um, the power of 2 that would give us A. So it would be log base 2 of A would be your actual function that you write. So write a function, that's that last one. Um, so for this one, um, write a function f to represent the time in months. So f of m, um, or f of a, I guess in this case, so if we're using a for months, equals log base 2 of a. So that's kind of that last one we put there. And then the wall is 240 square feet. About how many months will it take for the area to be completely covered by mold? So now we need to know when will this output be, um, or when will the area coverage be 240? So then that would be log base 2 of 240 would equal out to how many months we get, which is approximately 7.9 or 8 months. 7.9, almost 8 months. Number seven, a bank account had a balance of 100. Because of the interest accumulated over time, the balance doubles every decade. No withdrawals or other deposits are made. To find out when the account will have a balance of 1,000, Diego wrote um, 100 times 2 to the T equals 1,000. So it's initial value, and then it doubles um, every decade. My wrote that T would equal log base 2 of 1,000 divided by 100. Show that the equations are equivalent. So if we take um, the one that Diego said, we've got this. So then we'll divide by 100, which isolates our variable. So we have 2 to the t power. And then divide by 100 gives us 10. So then t, the exponent, is going to equal log base 2 of 10. Um, and then if we take my's, we can just simplify within hers, 1,000 divided by 100, which is just 10. So then you see that both of those are equivalent. So we could either set up the, um, set up the exponential equation, or we could go straight to the logarithmic equation, seeing that this top number 1,000 is the balance that you want divided by the original amount of 100. So use either of these strategies um, to find out what the when the account will have these two dollars. So for me, in looking at this, neither one is super difficult because you would just divide by the 100 here and then do the log, but this one already has it set up. So when I know what the output needs to be a thousand. Okay. So here now I'm going to be doing 5,000 versus 12,000. So for this first one, I'm just going to do T equals log base two of 5,000, which is my output that I want divided by my initial amount. And then I can just type that into my calculator and um, get the actual value. So if you type in, um, log base 2 of 5,000, 5, so 5,000 divided by 100, right, is just 50. So then if we do log base 2 of 50, 
will end up with um, 5.64 years. So then here we would have log base 2 of 12,000 divided by 100. So when we divide this, you're going to get 120. So log um, of one log base 2 of 120 gives you about 6.91 years.